it's a great pleasure to join all of you gathered here today to celebrate the life and legacy of perhaps one of the most uncelebrated of our founding fathers, George Clinton. As we stand here, it's a little breezy. <laughs> as, we, as we stand here in the shadow of the old Dutch church, a national historic landmark, and the heart of the Stockade Historic District, it should be very clear to all of us what a significant role the Hudson Valley played in the founding of our nation. From the adoption of New York's first constitution at the Ulster County Courthouse on April 20th, 1777, to the Revolutionary War battles on the Hudson and Constitutional Ratification Convention, held across the river in Poughkeepsie. So much of what makes the Hudson Valley, New York, and our nation what all of it is today. All of that and more can be attributed to this region and in great measure to the actions of this wonderful man. As most of you already know, George Clinton was a native of Ulster County, born in 1739 in Little Britain, which is now part of Orange County, but back then it was still in Ulster. His public career was nothing short of astonishing, beginning in 1759, when he was appointed the clerk of the Ulster County Court of Common Pleas, an office he held for the remainder of his life, and ending in 1812, just before beginning his third term as Vice President of the United States. In between, he studied and then practiced law, was elected to the New York Assembly, and when relations between England and the colonies declined during the early 1770s, he emerged as a leader among Hudson Valley, among landlords who strongly opposed, continued British rule, strongly opposed. To his credit, Clinton's role as leader of the Patriots and as the father of New York, as he is often called, might well have been the beginning of the long-standing tradition of community spirit and cooperation that runs through the fabric of the Hudson Valley. This community spirit helped to define the Hudson Valley as a region back then as much as it does still today. During my early years in Congress, I introduced legislation to establish the Hudson River Valley National Historic Heritage Area. And when President Bill Clinton signed this important legislation into law in 1996, it now only helped to protect and preserve the important historic sites and the scenic beauty of our region. It also officially recognized this civic spur, spirit as a, an implement that defines the Hudson Valley as a wonderful and marvelous community. George Clinton took part in many of the events that held, lay the foundation of our nation, and he did so. He was a, de a delegate to the Second Continental Congress, and although he voted in favor of the Declaration of Independence, he never had the chance to sign the document. In fact, he gave up his seat to assume the position of Brigadier General in the New York Militia, and then went on to earn a Brigadier, a Brigadier General's commission in the Continental Army. As I understand it, Clinton was a man of few words, and in general, not really fond of being a legislator. In fact, his opinion of legislative service was quite harsh. Once Clinton saying that, and I quote, the duty of looking out for danger makes men cowards. Interesting, interesting, intelligent, insightful person he was. In 1777, he was elected the first governor of New York, a feat he would repeat six additional times. In fact, he was so popular during the first election that he was actually voted in as both governor and lieutenant governor. 
but for obvious reasons, of course, he declined the latter. Clinton was a strong leader with considerable influence over the state legislature, and it is believed that his style of leadership served as a model for the delegates of the Constitutional Convention who wanted to see a strong executive for the new nation. Historian Alan Taylor once said that Clinton was, as, his, as he quoted, the astutest politician in revolutionary New York, which was an interesting statement. Although Clinton was elected to preside over the New York Ratification Convention in Poughkeepsie, he was a strong proponent of state sovereignty and initially opposed ratification. While he ultimately voted in favor of the Constitution, he remained a vocal advocate for a Bill of Rights. As we all know, George Clinton served as vice president under both Thomas Jefferson and James Madison. And he died on April 20th, 1812, just prior to the beginning of his third term as vice president. He was initial, initially buried in the Congressional Cemetery in Washington. But almost 100 years later, a committee to have Clinton remains moved to the old Dutch Church Cemetery was originated. On May 30th, 1908, during a celebration commemorating the 250th anniversary of his founding, Kingston welcomed home founding father and native son, George Clinton. I think it is critically and essentially important that we recognize the important role that Governor Clinton played in our nation's history as well as understanding how his actions have made on our lives better today. Without him, we may well have lost the Battle of Saratoga and seen the whole tide of the war shift. Ah, God bless with the drill. Without his advocacy, we may not have the Bill of Rights to protect our individual freedoms. And here in New York, we might not be able to claim that we are home to one of the oldest state university systems in our nation. Even now, his presence here at the Old Dutch Church helps support the legacy of the region and entices many people from across the nation to visit our community. Clearly, George Clinton was a remarkable man. And I am, as all of you are, I'm sure, and I know, proud to be part of today's celebration, honoring George Clinton on the 200th anniversary of his passing.